Today we're going to look at adding and subtracting vectors. So I've got this simple graph set up. This is basically the x-axis here with just general units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is the y-axis, traveling vertically, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A vector is basically uh, an arrow with a direction and a length. So if I just plot this kind of red sphere, its position is 3, 2, because x is 3 and y is 2. So the vector for this red sphere is going to look something like this. And we're going to call this vector 1. So the arrow is basically pointing in this direction and it has a length. It's basically the hypotenuse of this uh, triangle, two units and three units along. So basically to add vectors, I'm going to create a second uh, object. This is a blue sphere at position 1, 1, because x is 1 and y is 1. And the vector for this blue sphere looks something like this. And we're going to call that v2, vector 2. So if I want to add vector 1 to vector 2, it's very simple. It looks something like this. Basically, we can bring vector 2 to the end of vector 1, like that. And it doesn't matter which order you do this in, you can bring vector 1 to the end of vector 2. It's the same thing. So we end up with this position of 4, 3. So basically vector 1 plus vector 2 creates this third vector, this imaginary vector. So we can place an object at the location of this operation, vector 1 plus vector 2. If we were to place a kind of star object, it would end up here on this uh, 4, 3 coordinate. And just to show you the other uh, example, so the same thing, red sphere at 3, 2, blue sphere at 1, 1. And in the last example, we brought vector 2 to the end of vector 1, but we can also bring vector 1 to the tip of vector 2 like this. And we end up in the exact same coordinate, 4, 3, where we can place our imaginary object. So pretty simple. Now, subtraction is a little bit trickier, but still uh, kind of pretty easy to explain. So we've got the graph again. We place our red sphere at 3, 2. Got our vector 1 there. Same thing again. Whoops, that should be 1, 1. Blue sphere at 1, 1. That's vector 2, same as before. Now, if you want to subtract vector 1 minus vector 2 to find vector 3, uh, what we basically do is we create this type of line from vector 2 to vector uh, the red sphere position. And basically there's a general rule. Um, if you're subtracting, starting with vector 1, the tip of this vector has to be touching the tip of vector 1. If you were subtracting vector 2 from vector 1, then it would be the exact same thing, except this direction would be facing towards, would be on this side. So this is only the first step of the operation. We then have to take this back to the origin. So this is the true uh, direction and length of vector 3. So this, so this is in fact vector 2 plus vector 3, our new vector, which gives us the position of vector 1. So imagine if we wanted to place uh, an object between the red sphere and the blue sphere. So the first step would be uh, find out vector 3. So that's the true vector 3. So halfway, we would basically just scale this vector free 50%, like that. And then, using the theory that we learnt in uh, vector addition, we would add it to vector 2, like this. And that would give us the halfway position between the blue sphere and the red sphere. So basically, vector 2 plus half of vector 3 gives us the midway point between the blue sphere and the red sphere. This might seem a bit complicated, but uh, we'll actually implement this example and it should make a lot more sense. So I'm just going to move into Cinema 4D. And I've got this simple scene set up here. I've got a red sphere and a blue sphere. And instead of a star, I'm just using a light in between. And as you can see, there's no espresso, so we're going to create that espresso. I'm going to create a null object and I'm going to add a espresso tag. 
So basically, um, the light is driven by the position of the blue sphere and the red sphere. So that's going to be at the end here. And it's going to, it's going to have the position data fed into it. So I'm just going to go to the input coordinates position. And the red sphere and the blue sphere are going to be over here. I'm just going to control double click to optimize these little panels. I'm going to go to the output of red sphere and choose coordinates position and the same here. So basically we're going to take the red sphere position, the blue sphere position, something's going to happen in the middle here and that's going to give us hopefully an interactive um, position for the light. So let's just go back to our graph, start from the beginning. So let's have a look, you basically have to subtract vector 1 from vector 2 to find out this vector 3. So let's do that. I'm going to use uh, Expresso Calculate, just a simple math node. Now I'm going to set the math data type to vector, that's very important. And I'm going to set the function to subtract. So just feed the position into one input, the blue sphere position into the other input, and this should give us our vector 3. Okay, so what's the next step? We basically want to multiply vector 3 by a 50%, this operation here, to make it half the size, because we're then going to add this. So let's do this operation. Um, I'm going to use a node called float math add because uh, we can basically use a multiplier with this. So I'm taking vector three, putting it in the input. Make sure you set the data type to vector again. And function, I'm gonna choose multiply, and I'm gonna multiply it by 0.5, which gives us a half. So this is gonna output exactly this result. So the final step is to then take this and add it to vector two because this, if you move this up to the tip of vector two, that's an add operation. So that's all that's left, add to the blue sphere. I'm just gonna control drag this to create a duplicate. So we're doing an add operation now. And we want our half vector free. And we also want the blue sphere position because we're adding it, we're adding vector two with the half vector free. Then I'm going to output this and link it to the light position. Now let's see if it worked. I'm just going to move the blue sphere. Look at that. It's exactly halfway, keeping its distance. I've actually got these labeled wrong. Sorry, I'm just going to correct that. That should be red sphere. Okay. I'm just going to move that down. Look at that. It's always halfway and it's keeping the direction as well. So this can be useful for a number of things, maybe uh, some kind of tracer animation or uh, some kind of rigging. There's lots of uses.